Welcome to the Crypto News. In this video, Raul Pal talks about opportunities and how young people can make use of them to get richer. Listen to what he has to say. I think if you're 30 years old, this is the biggest opportunity of your lifetime. Out of crisis comes opportunity. So what you've done is you've cleared out a load of old businesses and the world is changing. I noticed this when I went to Japan a couple of years, a few years ago, is it bifurcates between the big brands and the big businesses and then artisanal stuff. And we've seen that movement already across the US, across Europe, where people are opening, you know, young people are opening like a cool bakers or a, you know, cool clothing place where they make cool clothing themselves and stuff like that. So there is a bifurcation that's going on. And what you've just done is cleared out the high street mm. of all of the old shit that needed to go. Now, that's painful and horrible because it's people's life savings and their businesses. But thinking like you should is, okay, all of that old stuff is gone. Rents are collapsing. I could start a business. Mm -hmm. Your probability of success of starting a business in a down cycle is so much higher than starting it when rents are high. You're competing for everything. And it is about doing unique stuff. Find your niche. The world used to be like Amazon, broad. But we're all finding that deep is the other strategy. Let's say you like baking. Well, become the best. Because guess what? You will always have business. Or, you know, you are particularly good at a certain thing. That, that opportunity is there. So retail is going to be a huge opportunity within this. It's just different retail. Don't sell stuff that everybody else sells. Sell unique stuff. We've seen it with the rise of, you know, um, farm to table eating and food and all of this stuff. We've seen it with clothing, we've seen it with jewelry, we've seen it with all sorts of things. So there's opportunities for creative outlets, which you couldn't do in cities because it was too expensive. I mean, to have a creative idea for a business in New York City or Hong Kong or London, yeah, you get marginalized to the kind of other neighborhoods. Well, guess what? That's going to change. So yes, it's terrible. And yes, it's going to be lingering. And yes, it's miserable for many. But change is always opportunity. When we started Real Vision, there was a friend of mine who was running the largest television company in the UK, private, tele, you know, non-BBC, and YouTube had just launched. And I said, how's oh, business, blah, blah, blah. I said, great, blah, 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 but I'm worried about YouTube. So why the hell do you care? It's cat videos. This is like 2006, seven. It's like, it's, tech, it's cat videos. He's like, no, no, no. He goes, we pay a hundred million pounds for a broadcasting license. And now anybody can become a TV company. So fast forward and COVID's just been the accelerant. It's like YouTube has just turned up. Anybody can become a university. Right. You don't even need premises. It's so disruptive, you can't get your head around it yet. Yes, of course, uh, excellent centers of learning, you know, top universities, Harvard, Oxford, whatever, they will always persist. But their offering will change. But there is no reason to have, particularly in the US, you know, hundreds of universities spread around places. It's not going to happen. Because I know at Real Vision, we could create an applied finance course that's better than 90% of what's out there. And for a fraction of the cost, because we'd start from scratch. No buildings, not millions of lecturers, you know, all of the stuff that goes with it, all gone. So the cost of education is about to collapse. And we want to be at the forefront of that. So you think of yourself, okay, five years time, what do I want to be doing? How do I get there? Because then you open your brain synapses to opportunity. They were the number one choice for every MBA in the world at the time. Um, you know, it's kind of, it was a ludicrous accumulation of intelligence and, and experience and skill. They have a culture that was some parts difficult to deal with because it's quite oppressive, but other parts it was a culture of excellence. I knew that a culture of excellence was going to be a powerful thing. Also, Goldman has the best network on earth, bar none. It's the, you know, it's the greatest firm to have ever worked for. Now, you know, I left it saying I've had enough of this bloody place. So it's not like... You know, I was a Goldman Group in. It's like the greatest firm ever. No, I was sick to death of it uh, after a few years. But I think it's very refreshing for, in particular, younger people to hear your story because uh, young people have a very linear idea of what success is like. I, you get very good grades, and then you go to the right university, and as a result of that, you land a good Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that when I was at Goldman and I had to hire and be part of the graduate intake, I would reject all of those people. Because they're identikit. The actual thing that gives career success, really, is character and diverse broad experiences. Those two things combined with a sense of competing with oneself and not with everybody else is, I think, the defining thing of success. 
So I would always choose people who traveled over people who went to work at you know, Credit Suisse in their, t in their summer holidays. Because I want that person who's backpacked through the Amazon. Because you, guess what? They can throw anything that life comes at them. I want to see people who have a personality, who have a character, that done things that are sociable and interactive, and not just for their CV, just for the sheer joy of it. You want those people because they're adaptable. And if they're smart as well, then you've got the holy grail. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available, and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.